Hi everybody, my name is Hannah, this is Pepper and Pine, and I have a geometry tutorial to share with you today. We are in the middle of our Waldorf main lesson block for geometry, and we are using this book called Drawing Circle Images as inspiration for these following lessons. The first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of my Fabriano 90 pound hot press watercolor paper. This has a nice smooth finish, and it is 9 inches by 12 inches. I'm going to set my radius to 4 centimeters. I've eyeballed the center of the page, and now I'm going to draw my very first circle. Next we want to draw our diameter straight through the center of your circle so you do need a ruler for this. The next thing we're going to do is readjust our compass. I did have to use another one that was larger in order to draw an arc above and below. Those arcs are going to cross and where they cross we're going to set our straight edge and we're going to draw another line that goes straight through our diameter and this way we're going to get our four equal divisions in our circle. Next, we're going to readjust our compass so that it has the same radius as our circle. And at each of those four points, we're going to draw two arcs on the outside of the circle. Where each of those two arcs cross is going to be a new point in which we can take our ruler, connect those two points, and then draw a line straight through the center of our circle. And in this way, we will have divided our circle into eight equal parts. We're going to erase all the extra lines and marks because we don't need them and we're going to have a lot of arcs and circles when we're done so it's best to erase those from now. Next you're going to readjust your compass so that it has the same radius as your original circle and then at each of those eight points you're going to draw a circle. Each circle should go through the center of your circle and if it doesn't do erase and readjust because those slight alterations will really distort your final image. I've counted them up just to be sure and I do have those eight circles. Now I have readjusted my compass so that the radius is the diameter of the original circle and that at the center of each of those eight circles I am now going to draw a larger circle. Very quickly there are going to be so many lines on the page it's going to be hard to know where to draw your circle so do be mindful as you're constructing these larger circles and make sure that your compass doesn't change the radius as you're working through them. So at this point I'm just going to erase any extra lines that I don't need, any of the markings that I made originally. You can also start to erase any arcs and circles that you don't want. What's really great about these designs is that they can look really different depending on which arcs and circles you erase and also depending on which segments you end up watercoloring or coloring in. Now it's time for the fun part and we're going to watercolor this image in using my distress inks. I've got a couple pieces of plastic there that I'm going to use as my non-porous surface. I'm going to take my ink pads and just squish them down onto that and that's going to give me just enough ink to use as watercolors. Now these are going to dry permanent but while they're wet you can use them as watercolors. I'm also going to use a little bit of my Heidi Swap Color Shine in order to dilute our inks and that's going to give a nice shimmer especially when our painting is dry. So now comes the fun part of just choosing different segments to watercolor in and while I really love that we use different shades of green for this project I found that the shades were quite similar and that maybe diluting them a little bit more and some a little bit less would have given me more variety in my greens. Overall I do really like the way that it turned out in the end but I do wish that I had more varieties of green for this project. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to watercolor this in and each way you're going to have a unique design that is beautiful. I really like seeing these designs come to life depending on how you watercolor them in. Here's my second design and right now I'm working alongside my 13 year old son during our geometry lesson and I've decided to watercolor this in really differently. Now I didn't like the yellow in the center, I found it to be a little bit too bright and I had chosen the yellow specifically because I had noticed that the greens in our previous project just all seemed a little bit too similar and I thought that a little bit of yellow might balance out all of that green but it just didn't. So I waited till it dried and then I went over it with a couple different shades of green and then I just kind of worked my way to the outside of the page and I know that part of this design goes off the page and that may be a little bit frustrating but you can always reduce the original radius so that it doesn't go off the page or use a larger piece of paper. 
Here's a closer look at both of those drawings in the end. You can see how each of them are quite unique depending on how you watercolor them in, especially how you do the very outside part of the design. If you'd like to see some more of our geometry tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more tutorials as well as links to the materials that we've used. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.